Hey guys, this is Billy from AdultCello.com. I have a question for you. Can you hear the difference between the two clips I'm about to play? So, if you haven't guessed already, today what I want to do is talk about the metronome and how to use it well, okay? This is um, not a sexy topic. It's not a fun topic to practice necessarily, especially if it's not something that comes naturally. But being able to play along with a metronome and really sync up with a metronome is such a critical ability for a cellist. Okay, especially if you want to break out of classical and maybe play some pop tunes, uh, maybe try jazz. A lot of that music um, outside of classical is literally metronomic, as in in the recording studio when it's made, there's a metronome going and the musicians are going to a metronome. For example, most pop music is like that. You need a completely rock steady metronomic understanding of the pulse. Otherwise, it, it just doesn't come off right, okay? So I want to give you three kind of concepts to work with. This is for you if you're not 100% sure if you're using the metronome right. Um, sometimes you just sort of turn it on with good intentions and you, you're aware of it at the beginning. And then, then it becomes like this nagging sound. And, and then eventually you're just sort of playing and there's, a, there's like a beeping I, like uh, like the rice cooker's done and it's just reminding you. <laughs> it comes into your consciousness once in a while. So here's, here's some ideas for how to get used to the metronome. Uh, the biggest thing to, that'll connect these three, you know, exercises is that the metronome has to become a physical thing, okay? It's not about hearing it and listening for it and thinking, you know, kind of mentally trying to count while you play necessarily. Just like if you're dancing at a club or at a party and you're dancing to the music, you're moving your body to the beat of the music. The metronome has to be internalized, almost like you're listening to music. You want to have that feeling of if someone turned off the metronome, you could just continue that pulse. Okay, And that's actually the first exercise. So the first exercise is to predict, predict the beat. Um, what you can do is start with like a metronome app and get the get a metronome going and then you can either some apps you can program it in to to go mute after a certain amount of beats or you know if you can have a friend do it or you can just turn it off yourself but have the metronome continue to go but on mute and you continue the beat and then have someone turn it back on the volume and see if you're lined up okay where I got this from was I had this kind of fun game I would play when I was practicing. If someone called me, um, especially if I didn't recognize the number, I would just ignore it. But when the call came, the metronome I was using would cut out. And so what I would do is, especially if I'm saying doing my scale warm up or something like that, I would continue going and then try to time it perfectly so that when the call ends and the metronome comes back in, I'm still lined up with it. It's a really fun game to play and it makes you much more aware of being able to predict the beat, which is a big part of it, okay? So you don't want to have a metronome on and then you're sort of like listening for it and reacting to when you hear the click, you'll always be late. You have to have it so that like, mm, mm, you, you can feel almost with your body, you can feel when the next down beat comes. All right, exercise number two is to use the metronome in short bursts, okay? I think the biggest Problem is that if you're not comfortable using the metronome, okay, my teacher said to use it. Okay, I'll put it on, and then you're kind of listening for it, and then like, oh, I guess I'm not really with it. It just becomes a background thing. So what I would do is, let's say you're going to practice 15 minutes, and normally you would have the metronome metronome on all 15 minutes. Put it down to two or three minutes, and take a passage, and whether it's on the cello or whether you're singing the notes. Or, or clapping out the rhythm of the notes, use the metronome and really try to time it up and really sync up with the metronome like I was talking about. So it's, so it's like a, a physical need to place the note at the perfect spot.
okay? Do that for two to three minutes, and then you can go back to maybe practicing, and then maybe even turn the metronome off, because it's, I think it's a bad habit to just have it going and you're not listening to it. You should either be using it or you just turn it off, but don't have it just on there and you're just filtering it out. So that's number two. Number three is to practice your two against three. I almost didn't introduce this idea because it's, it's very hard to do um, until it's comfortable and it's very hard to teach. But so basically what a two against three means that at the same time, there's a duple meter going, okay? And then you also overlay a triple meter, okay? So in layman's terms, if I have this beat going, let me speed it up, it'll be a little easier. Okay. So if I was in duple, one, two, one, two, one and two and one and two and the beat is is being divided up by multiples of two. Okay. Now if I turn this into triplets, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I'm fitting in three beats or three notes per beat. Here's where it gets difficult. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's hard. So what that is is now I'm grouping every two clicks of the metronome, but I'm singing three beats. So if I just did one, two, three, one, two, three, that's not that hard because that's just fitting three in per click. But now I hear two clicks, but I sing three notes. That's the three against two. If you can get really comfortable fitting three notes evenly, then you, you're starting to really internalize the two and slot the three notes in perfectly. The biggest thing that happens with people is they, they end up doing kind of like a, like Carmen, that like tango melody, because they hold too long on the first two. They bum, bum, ba, bum, ba, 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 ba. And that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So, so one more time, duple is one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, it's like a pie and you cut three, 33.3 repeated. <laughs> you divided the time up exactly three, okay? And part of it is learning to kind of rub against the actual clicking of the, the duple beats, okay? That's a hard one. That's kind of maybe even an extra credit one. That's how hard it is. But if you can get comfortable doing that, it, it means you're really interacting with the metronome because you're feeling those beats and you're hearing them and then you're fitting a, a different rhythm into it, okay? So there you go. If you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'd really appreciate it. Have fun. But that's not all, sorry. <laughs> Next week, I will be giving a five minute scale routine for beginners that uses the metronome. So get to work now getting used to the metronome and then we'll use it next week.